Every so often I like to feature a blog entry from Emily Lochtawalla. She's the Science and Technolo Technology Coordinator for the Planter Society. On her April 16th blog entry, she asks, What do you do if the big one is headed our way? And this is what she had to say. One question I'm, I'm asked frequently is whether there is any international laws or agreement for how to handle the situation of an impending asteroid impact. The Planetary Society's members are very concerned about the threat of Earth impacts. We, uh, we conducted a membership-wide survey uh, just closed last week, which would have been the week prior to April 16th, asking them what activity of ours they most support, and the top choice was monitoring potentially dangerous near-Earth asteroids and comets. The complete survey results will be posted at the end of this month on the Planetary Society's website at planetary.org. At 6.38 um, UTC on October 6, 2008, astronomers at the Catalina Sky S Survey discovered an object pr um, provisionally called 8TA9D69, formerly known as 2008TC3. The object enters Earth's atmosphere at 2.45 uh, Universal Time uh, Coordinated on October 7th, whereupon it exploded at the altitude of 40 kilometers, littering the northern Sundanzi Desert with tiny black fragments. The question of how to respond in the event that our monitoring uncovers a threat wasn't even particularly relevant just a couple of decades ago, because we had no idea what was coming our way. But the recent experience with, uh, with asteroid 2008 TC3 proved that we now have the capability to, to provide at least some warning of the location and potential magnitude of an asteroid or comet impact. We're very proud about the fact that lots of the past winners of our Shoemaker Near Earth Object Grants part, uh, took part in the international efforts to track the asteroid. Sound right. Our members' money was put to good use that night. We only had hours warning with TC3 but it was very small and actually posed no threat to the ground. The more dangerous, i.e. larger an object, the farther ahead of the time we should notice it, we hope. So we can expect some warning, but, but there's actually very little legal guidance for what to do in the event that we predict days, months, or years ahead of time that an object will impact Earth and cause harm. There's a host of different kinds of issues to consider. For events where there is little warning, hours or days, the question becomes one of communication and planning. If the impact is predicting to occur in or near a populated area, how should a warning be issued and what should the, the population do? Our members' money was put to good use that night. We only had hours warning with TC3, but it was very small and actually posed no threat to the ground. The more dangerous, i.e. larger an object, the farther ahead of the time we should notice it, we hope. So we can expect some warning there's actually very little legal guidance for what is what to do in the event sound rolling so we can expect some warning but but there's actually very little legal guidance for what to do in the event that we predict days months or years ahead of time that an object will impact earth and cause harm there's a host of different kinds of issues to consider for events where there is little warning, hours or days, the question becomes one of communication and planning. If the impact is predicting to occur in or near a populated area, how should a warning be
be issued and what should the, the population do. But for events where we have many months or years of warning, the questions turn into ones of mitigation and that's where it gets especially thorny, legally and ethically speaking. Can we do anything to alter asteroids course to aim its impact site away from a populated area, if not deflect it entirely? If such deflection results in harm to people who would not otherwise have been at risk, are they owed reparations or should deflection even be attempted at all? We should take the responsibility, that is, spend the money to develop mitigation strategies. When an impact threat is discovered, who has the responsibility to make decisions about how to respond? Right now, there's no framework, and I can only, ima uh, and I can only imagine the every man for himself response that would offend the, or that would attend the announcement of such a threat. There would be lots of talk in the UN, and the UN would act unitarily. In the worst case scenario, different spacefaring entities would develop a competing missions. To, go, uh, to do something to the asteroid which might probably wouldn't interfere constructively. Sounds like a good plot for a novel. Somebody go write that. It's a vacuum. So I was happy to see an announcement about a conference to take, a, to take place next week at the University of Nebraska at Lincoln titled Near Earth Objects risk responses and opportunities it's billed as a conference billed as a conference that will examine the legal and instrumental institutional challenges of international protocols if large asteroids or other interplanetary objects came too close to earth for comfort and is sponsored by the secure world foundation the Association of Fa uh, Space Explorers and the American branch of the International, International Law Association. In response to our members' evident interest in the subject, our esteemed Executive Director Lou Friedman will be attending, and we are more generally ramping up our efforts in planetary defense. Director of Projects Bruce Betts will be going to another related conference the first International Academy of Astronauts Planetary of, of the, the, let me get this right it's the first International Academy of Astronautics Planetary Defense Conference at the end of this month Amy locked a wall had brought up some very serious and important questions first question is and I'd like to get the community response as a comment who should be responsible to develop a procedure to protect us from any impending collisions with asteroids? Second question. Is there any moral implications for, it, for us to decide to deflect an asteroid that would have impacted a larger populated area into an area that is lower on population? who otherwise would have never been hit or impacted by the collision? Or should we not try to deflect anything at all and deal with the implications of wherever the impact would strike? Now please leave a comment on your response to uh, these couple questions. Also, if you have any questions for Emily Lockerwalla, Please also leave a comment indicating a question for Emily. I will email the questions off to her, and once I get any responses, I will bring them back to you and let you know what she had to say. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode of Planetary Television. My name is Errol Coder. Thank you very much, and keep looking up.